Hey everybody, welcome to my video about how to customize your HomePod. I'll be explaining how to access the HomePod settings and going into detail about the various options that are available to customize your HomePod. During the time of social distancing and self-isolation earlier this year, I decided to take a leap into adding some smart home features to my life as they look pretty cool from what I've seen and it provided me with a project to work on while I was stuck at home. One part of that, which is not necessarily required, but I thought would be cool, is the HomePod. When you set up an Apple HomeKit based smart home, you need to have a hub device that's always on and accessible if you want to be able to control it when you're not home. That would be either an Apple TV box, a dedicated iPad that stays home all the time, or a HomePod. So I chose the HomePod since I always wanted to conveniently play music on it too. After setting up the HomePod, I found I had difficulty figuring out how to customize it. So I thought I'd make this video to make it a bit easier for people. I thought there would be a dedicated app like there is for the Apple Watch that would appear when the HomePod was set up, but I was wrong. Since the HomePod is thought of as a home hub from Apple's perspective, the preferences and settings are in the Home app on your iPhone, iPad, or Mac. To access the HomePod settings on your Mac, just run the Home app and right or control click on the HomePod and click on Settings. You can also click on Show Controls, as they both seem to bring up the same options. But I found the Settings button opens up the options in a larger window that makes it easier to see. Of course on your iPad or iPhone, you just run the Home app and long press or haptic press the HomePod to bring up the HomePod window. I'll be demonstrating this on iOS 14, but the process is the same on iOS 13 as well. On this screen, you have basic playback controls and new in iOS 14 is the alarm settings so you can set up or check out the alarms on your HomePod. To access the HomePod's settings, you can either tap on the gears in the bottom right or just scroll down. First you have your HomePod's name. To update or make adjustments, just tap the box. Then you have the room option, where you can label the room it's in. I think this can become handy if you have or plan to have more than one HomePod at some point. Next is the option to include this HomePod in favorites. If you select on, then it will show up in the list of your favorite accessories in the home app, making it easier to find. This next option I don't believe was available in iOS 13 on this menu, but could be accomplished through the automation option in the home app. But now it puts automations more in the user's face in this menu, so you can have specific smart home automations run when you leave the house with your iPhone, such as turning off the lights and TV automatically using the add automation button, or just pause any audio playing on the HomePod when you leave. Next are some basic settings such as your default iTunes or Apple Music account, parental controls, and sound check that normalizes the volume on all audio playback so you don't get some songs being way louder than others. There's also the option to update the listening history. This option has multiple purposes such as influencing the recommendations in Apple Music and syncing playback state of podcasts across your various Apple devices. Then, there's a Siri settings that allow you to decide whether you want the HomePod to be listening all the time or would rather you tap the top and hold to access Siri. You can also enable or disable the lights on the top of your HomePod when Siri speaks. The sound when using the Siri option seems to be useless now since Apple took away the old familiar Siri tone. Whenever you used to use Siri on your HomePod, or almost any Apple device for that matter, it made a pleasant tone to let you know Siri was activated. Earlier this year, that suddenly disappeared across all of my Apple devices. So on my HomePod, whether that option is on or off, I don't get a tone. I really miss it and wish I had a choice. But I digress. Other options are of course the Siri language and voice. Also, the personal requests option. With personal requests, you can ask Siri on HomePod to remind you to do something, check your calendar, send a message, call someone, or make a note to capture a quick thought as long as your HomePod and iOS device, such as your iPhone, are using the same Apple ID and are on the same Wi-Fi network. In that option, you can also decide whether or not you want those kinds of requests to require authentication in case you share your HomePod with multiple people. There is also the Siri history option that lets you delete the Siri history at any time. Next, there's location services that allows your HomePod to know where it is. Then accessibility options that allows you to use voiceover or touch accommodations. You can also choose whether or not you share your HomePod analytics with Apple and an option to opt in to improve Siri and dictation. The next section is just the device information, such as the serial number, model, Wi-Fi or Mac address, and software version. And finally, the last setting is the reset. That allows you to completely 
reset your HomePod to factory settings. Useful if you decide to give it away to another family member someday. So that's how you access the HomePod's settings to customize it to fit your needs. On a side note, you can also add your HomePod to various HomeKit scenes and automations, like I did in this example, called Party, where I have certain lights in my home change colors like a disco and set up the HomePod to play the Kylie track, New York City. As annoying as it may seem after reviewing and understanding the HomePod's menu options, I guess it does make sense for it to be in the Home app. Did I miss anything about the HomePod you'd like to learn more about? Should I do some videos talking about my smart home setup? Let me know in the comments below. If enough people request it, I'll make one. If you enjoyed this video or found it helpful, feel free to give it a thumbs up. And while you're down there, don't forget to ring that bell and subscribe to the channel for more tech videos, including tech how-tos, every week. As always, thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.